Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Line CV and welcome to the first match preview of the new season. You guys, if you're like me, you're probably really excited for the start of the Premier League. I have missed it, I can't lie to you, but for today's format, I'm going to be doing things a bit differently. For the first part, I'm going to be talking about the potential lineup I see Sarri using. I'm going to be talking about then for the second part, how this field town, their strengths and their weaknesses. And for the third part, I'm going to be talking about how we can beat Huddersfield Town. But you guys, for the first match preview of the new season, please smash that like button. Help me get more than 1,000 likes for today's video. But before I do start anything, a quick announcement and something that's worth talking about. Mitchie Batshuayi has officially left to sign for Valencia on loan for the season. And yeah, you guys, it's a bit disappointing in that sense that he hasn't really been given that chance. Oh, I don't know, it's frustrating. I really felt that he could have been the striker up front for us. But if anything, this means that Morata should be having more confidence now, knowing that uh, competition isn't there for him. So hopefully he is going to start the season with some new confidence. You know, if you guys remember how Morata started the season last year, let's hope that he does continue that and, you know, really try and just, I don't know, he needs to improve you guys. Let's be serious. But when Mitri signed for Valencia, there wasn't an option to buy at the end, meaning that Chelsea are still in control and potentially maybe if he does do very well there, he could come back again. Who knows? I think with uh, Mitri, Valencia have tried very, very hard to try and secure him. They've really been talking to him and gassing him up for a very long time. So it's no surprise that he probably felt more confident signing for Valencia and thinking that Valencia are the best club to get first team football. But you guys, getting straight into the starting lineup, as you can see on the screen beside me, I'm going to be talking about some of the players which I think will be getting used by Sarian. Keep this in the back of your mind. Don't forget this. I'm guessing the team Sari might play. I'm not picking a team that I would preferably like to see. So please, no one get it confused. I don't want to see any dumb comments in the comment section. I went for the same back four because I think that this is the back four that Sari really feels comfortable with at this moment in time. I see Jorginho playing, of course. I think the fact that he came on later on in the Leon game really showed you that Sari is thinking about this game and he wants these guys to be fully fresh and fit. I do think that Kansei might play. I have gone for that. I think that was someone like Kansei. He's very intelligent. He understands things very quickly. I can't imagine it taking him too long for him to get used to that system. And I really feel that uh, it'd be great to see him and Jorginho playing together. And I don't really think Sari needs to waste time in regards to really easing someone like Kansei into the team. Now, moving to the number eight position, and I don't think there's enough time for Kovacic to stake a claim uh, in the first team just yet. I think he will need maybe one or two more games before he does acclimatise. Now, we've got three options, Sesk, uh, Barkley, or Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now, it was really difficult. The safe option I went for was Ross Barkley, because I feel that the reason why Sarri has been using him is the fact that, you know, it's purely been down to the fact that Barkley has been working under Sarri a lot. When it comes to playing Sari ball and how Sari likes to train the team off the ball, there's a massive focus on positioning. When you're off the ball, when you press, you have to be in the right positions every single time. And I think with Ross Barkley, he's worked under Sari uh, the longest out of all these guys. And I feel that he's acclimatized to that quicker than someone like Ruben loftus cheek So this is why I don't feel Ruben will be playing tomorrow. Maybe Cesc Fabregas could potentially play as a number eight. He's someone that's very tactically sophisticated when it does come to the style of play. Of course, being at Arsenal, actually, I can't really say Arsenal, but being at Barcelona in particular under Pep Guardiola, I think it's very easy for Cesc. So I do think it's a battle between Cesc and Barkley for the number eight position. To be honest, you know what? I think that Sarri will go for Cesc Fabregas as the number eight. Now you guys, you can see the forward positions and I think it's pretty clear that Morata will be starting. On the right hand side, I have gone for Willian. And on the left hand side, I have gone for Hudson Adoy. Now, you guys might be thinking, Nini, I think you're being a bit too ambitious. But what I'm personally thinking is the reason why we didn't see him play any type of minutes against Leon was due to the fact that Sari has kept him in mind for the game against Huddersfield Town. And I think this is why he has played. Now, of course, there could be the possibility that, you know, Sari wants guys like Pedro and Million to play together and get used to things. But I honestly feel that Hudson would have got some minutes against Leon as it was only a friendly. So I do feel that Hudson Odoi will be starting. And I think that will be the biggest surprise for that game on Saturday. But you guys in the comment section below, who do you think Sari will pick for our first game of the season? Now, moving on to the tactical preview of this match preview, starting with Huddersfield Town. Now, with Huddersfield Town, they have invested quite decently in the transfer market so far. You know, they've signed some attacking players. They were desperately in need for attacking players. Yes, they did sell Inspector Stoke City. 
I personally feel this guy's a championship player. He's never really been able to hack it in the Premier League. They do have Mooney and Depotra up front. We know Depotra from last season with the head of the goal that he scored against us. But they did reinforce the guys like Jacabi from Monaco, Sobi from Stoke City as well. And they did sign Mpenza from Montpellier on loan for the season as well. So as I said, they really needed to sign attacking players because that was one thing in particular that Huddersfield Town did suffer from last season. Now Huddersfield Town under David Wagner, they're really notorious for their hard work and their defensive positioning and their defensive work rate as well. In a sense, he is kind of like a, a Klopp in that sense in terms of how he likes his teams to have this very organized style of pressing, meaning that everyone knows the positions they need to be in. This means that none of their players are left isolated whatsoever. There's always defensive support all across the pitch. Let's say if the player is on the right hand side, Huddersfield will be prepared positionally down the right hand side. If it's in the middle, you know, vice versa, etc, etc, etc. And due to this compact style, you know, Huddersfield Town were able to secure a famous victory over Manchester United. And they are a very difficult team to play against, especially when they're fully fit. Now, with Huddersfield Town, they started the season very well, but they ended things pretty badly. And I think personally, it came down to the fact that Number one, a lot of their players were very, very tired as he didn't really rotate the team as much and it's hard to keep up that pressing style. And on top of that as well, you know, when you can't rely on your defensive work rate, there just wasn't enough firepower up front. They weren't able to create many chances whatsoever. Their attacking players were very poor on top of that as well, especially on the counter-attack. And it's no surprise why they've invested so much money so far this summer in attacking players. Now, when it comes to how I think Huddersfield will play against us, Wagner likes to use a five at the back a lot of times against the big team. So maybe he might change things up a tiny bit now because attacking players have been signed. And, and to give Huddersfield Town that counter-attacking threat, but I don't think he's going to do that. I think personally, he's going to stick with a tried and tested formula. I think he will go for that defensive positioning. Again, you guys, at the beginning of last season, Huddersfield Town really profited from that, from fully fresh, fit players so i think he's going to continue down that path now moving on to us you guys and i think when it comes to huddersfield town in a way they're a great test for us under sorry ball now why do i say that remember they are going to be very defensive against us tomorrow and i really feel that they're the perfect team to play against to really try and practice how we're going to break down teams in the attacking transitions because you know when you look throughout our pre-season yes i i feel that our pressing is growing and growing each game yes it's very easy for us now to part from the back, especially now we've signed Kepa as well. A great sweeper keeper on top of that. But the one weakness has been the fact that when it comes to translating our possession into scoring opportunities and scoring chances, we have struggled at times quite a lot. And I personally think that is down to a number of reasons. Number one, some of our first team players haven't really been back in time they haven't been playing enough under sorry on top of that and understandably it's going to take the team a while to really get used to how to play under sorry remember Huddersfield Town will be playing without possession so it's really going to help us in that effect and it's going to be interesting to see how far we've come along when it comes to creating scoring opportunities personally I feel the wide areas will be key when it comes to breaking down Huddersfield Town it's about playing with the ball very quickly when it comes to those attacking transitions I personally feel it would be great to really target the wing back areas and try to isolate them. I think the overlapping runs from the fullbacks, you know, because Sari likes the fullbacks to make very aggressive overlapping runs. That's going to help us in terms of stretching the play and trying to pull that, that defensive structure of Huddersfield Town's defence apart. I think that's the best way to do that. Now, for me personally, I'd hope to see Emerson play because I think he's much better when it comes to that. But something tells me Sari has his eyes on Marcus Alonso. But really, you guys, the key to beating Huddersfield Town is going to come down to speed and incision. There's going to be moments where Huddersfield Town's defensive structure won't be great. We're going to have to be very clinical with our chances and we're going to have to be very incised with our passing on top of that as well. As I was saying, I feel that Huddersfield Town are a great test for us, especially as we are playing Arsenal after them. I do see us beating Huddersfield Town tomorrow. I've gone for a 2-0 win because... I'm not going to expect the goals to come just yet until the first team are fully acclimatised to each other and really got used to playing under Sari on top of that, you guys. But anyway, as I said, I've gone for a 2 0 win over Huddersfield Town. In the comment section below, let me know what you think the scoreline is going to be. How excited are you to see us play against Huddersfield Town tomorrow? Let me know that as well. 
But anyway, you guys, before I do go, I need to shout out my guy Christian from the All American Chelsea podcast. He has started a new podcast and so far he's doing very well. He's had a lot of great guests on so far and Joe Tweedy and Lawrence from 100% Chelsea. Plus, he's going to be getting a lot more. You guys, I'm always talking about the community and how we should really support each other. I have featured on this podcast, so you guys, if you want to help support him, and if you want to hear my thoughts and opinions on Chelsea and personal things on top of that as well, make sure in the description below, you do download his podcast and listen to it later tonight when you're in bed, when you're relaxing, when you just want to hear my voice in the background. <laughs> but you guys, it's in the description below. Make sure you do download and make sure you do give it a listen. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm the NEFC from Blue Lions TV. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.